Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I think this might be the latest I've ever recorded. So uh, it's been a pretty weird day. Um, I absolutely wore myself out with the excitement and the uh, promotion from day one. So I said, okay, I don't want to over promote. I'm going to just, uh, I did a little podcast with the gathering or the quartering, sorry. Uh, it was uh, fun with uh, Jeremy, but I told him, hey, I got to keep it kind of short. Um, uh, I got a business trip I'm heading on the next day, so I got to get ready. So I guess I was still worn out from the day before because I went to lay down for 10 minutes after the thing, and I would guess I was tuckered out like a little fellow. And uh, then my son woke me up at 10.30 asking if I wanted dinner. Um, so uh, now I'm awake, uh, about to go to sleep, but um, I was reading comments and uh, emails, and people are actually pretty – people are over the moon yesterday. Everyone's happy, and uh, but today I was getting hit up a lot. They go, "What are you doing, dude?" They go, "You didn't promote the book th today." And he goes, "And you were just like retweeting generic Twitter drama that had nothing to do with the book." And I was so I was talking to people. I go, "Oh, sorry. I I thought people would get annoyed if I over promoted." They're like, dude, you only got like twenty two days left. Just promote it. If you over promote it, we'll, believe me, we'll tell you. So I was like, all right, cool. So here it is. This is the page. Um, so uh, the, the big thing that was the exciting thing for me today, uh, well, actually, there was a lot of movement on the project, but um, uh, a lot of it was behind the scenes. So we uh, surpassed a thousand backers today, which I found very, very exciting because to me, a backer is a reader. Um, I always talk about... Uh, Stati you know, theoretical zero sales, which really means theoretical zero reads. If some Marvel comic ships five, six thousand, it's quite possible only a thousand people bought it and almost no one actually read it. Um, so, you know, if you're paying for this and you're ordering it and you're backing it, like people are going to read it. So, um, we got a little featured in the arts and film collection here at the bottom and won a little award. So, the other stuff uh, behind the scenes was planning out all of the uh, stretch goals. So, um, like I said, I, I, I kind of stopped myself yesterday when I was doing them just like willy-nilly. I did one, it's fine. I said card, stubbers, card cover stock square bound. That's not a big added expense. I almost said, uh, <laughs> I almost said uh, hard cover and then luckily something told me not to and then people told me, oh God, you would have been dead. But so this one was talking to people and planning out how we're going to do the covers, um, what level we're going to announce the the uh, uh, special artist for a, a stretch goal. And then I'm talking to a guy right now. We batted a couple things back and forth. And this one's going to be, how do I describe it? There's almost going to be another project attached to this project. And it's actually doable. Um, uh, that it won't break the bank and it won't have to be uh, make anything late. So anyway, <laughs> now that I did that little preamble for people getting uh, bothered, I wasn't promoting. Um, and I'm gonna. So there's gonna be at least one Jawbreakers focused comic per day, and then I am going to mention it not as long as I did this time at the top of every video. Uh, okay, so um, this right here, <laughs> when I woke up like a little sleepy little fellow. You know, I went to my Twitter and I saw this and first I got annoyed and then I laughed it off and then I was cleaning, you know, doing putting around, doing some errands, packing for my trip. And then I started to get really, really bothered. And the reason I got bothered is because you're literally seeing the literal rise and fall of a once great company and you're seeing exactly why it happened. It's like one of those like the usual suspects where, you know, at the end you find out the clues and they were right in front of you, you know, the, the quartet uh, office supply company from Skokie, Illinois. It was right there, right in front of you. So uh, IDW uh, says, it's a special day. On this day, 19 years ago, a handful of passionate people sharing a much too small office banded together to launch what would come to be known as IDW Publishing. Happy 19th birthday, IDW. Can't wait to see what the future holds. Uh, it's called receivership. Um, hashtag then and now. Hashtag happy birthday. So 
One thing you're going to notice for a supposed major publisher, formerly major publisher, it only got 153 likes and 29 retweets. There's more than 29 people in the current picture. That means people who work there are not even retweeting this own announcement, but we're going to get that in some more. So we're going to go. So a little background on IDW. Um, so 19 years ago, it's like just before I got into the Marines. I remember them. So they used to be called Idea Plus Design Works. It was a very kind of of its time name for a company. Eventually, they just went to IDW. But their whole shtick was that they were prestige as the default. They didn't start with a ton of books. They didn't start off trying to cobble together a superhero universe. They didn't start with a bunch of franchises and licenses. They started with 30 Days of Night and some other horror-centric books, but they were nice. I remember seeing them and just picking them up in like, uh, you know, special cardstock, uh, embossed lettering. Not like the 90s over the top, but classy. It was very, very classy. So let's look at the then and now and uh, dial this down. And I'm just going to move us back and forward. We're going to notice all of the obvious clues that uh, Verbal Kint is actually Kaiser Soze. Okay, so just look. That's now. Uh, they uh, lost several million, million dollars last uh, year. Uh, their, uh, one of their founders had to step down. Uh, they destroyed their reputation with the Aubrey Sitterson thing. They destroyed their reputation with Hasbro. So let's look and see what the differences are. Okay, so let's start with the obvious. That this is four men. Four, apparently, uh, white guys from SoCal in the 90s. Uh, this looks like, uh, it is, actually this reminds me of uh, this guy in the back, he's kind of like the officer, you know. This is like, little uh, lieutenant, here's the enlisted guys over here. I was in San Diego from 2000-2004, either in boot camp or up at Camp Pendleton, or I lived near Mir Mira Mesa. And I knew guys like this, I was guys like this. These guys are young, they are scrappy, they have crappy apartments but they don't care because it's about like building this company and they did a great job from the beginning so much so that i'm going to ignore that the guy was wearing sandals at the office it really bothers me look at this you can smell that it smells bad in there they've got surfboards over there that probably aren't even for show because it's san diego it's like hey bro whatever what are you 24 26 do your work Maybe take a, go over to, I don't know, where do you serve? I actually never served. You can't serve for La Jolla Cove. That was the only place I went to because I like the sea lions. Um, look at this. Looks like they've got like dirty clothes in the back. This place definitely smells. Um, got your little soda on the thing. But the thing is, these guys were all in it because they grew up loving comics. They wanted to be successful. They had an idea to try something new. It was all day, all along. Hard work, merit fun with your buddies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now we go to modern day BuzzFeed. Oh, I'm sorry, IDW. When your comic company group photo could also be the group photo for BuzzFeed and you're not BuzzFeed, this is a huge problem. So what do we got? I'm going to say the elephant in the room. There are way too many women in this picture. I do not believe these women are lifelong American comics fans. I think you got a couple of uh, manga fans. I think you got a couple who might have had a brother who was in the comics so they could kind of fake their way through the inter interview. Let me put it this way. Diana loves to knit. If I went into a yarn store and I saw 90% men working there, we would leave immediately. <laughs> that would be weird. Not everything has to have gender parity, especially a pastime and a subculture and an industry and a fandom that does not have gender parity. There is no correct number of anyone to be in the industry, but this is wrong. <laughs> so uh, I do not believe that this 
what is this? 40%? No. I look at this other picture. I see four guys who grew up reading X-Men comics, riding bikes to the 7-Eleven, buying their comics, getting the, the, the Coke Slurpee, playing freaking Dig Dug or Pole Position or Spy Hunter. And right here I see a bunch of girls who got some liberal arts degrees. Uh, there seems to be a uh, unspoken goal in the comics industry to hire every lesbian in America. I don't know why they're doing this. Yes, I am being a little tongue in cheek here, but seriously. So what we got here? We got the we got the BuzzFeed uh, All Stars right here. We got a bunch of soy boys, and we got some very thirsty late middle aged fat white men. This is a recipe. Clap warning for disaster. This is how you kill your company. You are hiring based on, th they hired for this photo. Also, look at the digs. You got this nice uh, office park, you know, probably a common area, a couple different companies. That is expensive. This looks like the guy, this looks like a storage room in like the back of like an auto body shop. Like in the front, there's a bunch of Mexicans doing like reforming bumpers and stuff like that. And then like, they'll tell them, it's like, hey, Weros, we're heading out. You want to join us? And they're like, oh, no, sorry, Josue, we're going to finish our comics. They're like, ah, you're crazy. Um, so uh, this one, this looks like a, uh, a group of people who leave at five every day. Uh, those, that's the people who make the whole day. It looks like half of them leave early because they need a, quote, mental health day or uh, their food allergies are acting up. Now, you could say this is a really petty video, <laughs> but your brain is used. It's literally a judging organism. You know, if you walked into the company office, uh, you know, on a Marine Corps base, and you saw a bunch of guys who, let's just pick, okay. You know, open mouth smiles, soy boys. You would say, oh, something, what's going on here? Um, I have never ever walked into a comic book store and seen this, never, ever, ever, ever. Um, I've, there, there's no part of this picture where I can zoom in and say, oh yeah, that's what my local comic shop looked like current year, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and I gotta say, there are weight, actually this guy, this middle-aged guy right here in the middle, he actually has the look that's appropriate for IDW. We lost millions. He probably had a full head of hair until like six months ago. <laughs> the, all the bottoms dropped out. But uh, hey, look at this, we got, we look just like BuzzFeed. Uh, so um, I'm not going to go too long in on this. I know there's exceptions to rules. Uh, I work with people of all shapes and sizes. We got HP. Um, she's uh, going to be the fulfillment manager. She's uh, very enthusiastic. Obviously, uh, she says flat out, I'm really into manga and anime mostly, but there are parts of American superhero comics that I like. Um, so there's a lot of enthusiasm from uh, her. But I'm just calling shenanigans on this whole picture. And I feel like this picture right here tells you why IDWs fail. Tells you why they, are hi why they hired a socialist to write G.I. Joe. Why they kept him on when he told people who was, who was and was not allowed to mourn 9-11 who hired mags for freaking Transformers visionaries, who did not rein mags in in any way or given any constructive editing to turn out those horrible, horrible scripts, uh, how they're going to lose basically the franchise, the Hasbro franchise that lets them be in this nice office park. Um, and uh, this is the end. This is the beginning. Right there. This is the end. This is the rise of a comic company, and this is the fall. And so y'all can get butt hurt, but um, this looks like a comic book company, and this looks like BuzzFeed. So anyway, tell me what you think about this video. 
Tell me uh, the level of promotion I should give for jawbreakers. Tell me how bad this room stinks. You know what? I bet, I bet the surfboards kind of help with the stench because the mildew and the bo and let's be honest, the farts. But then you get the the, the salt air, the ocean air scent off of the the surfboards, and uh, I guarantee there's dirty underwear in here somewhere. Look at that. They're rocking the freaking candy case uh, uh, Apple desktop. Nice. Does anyone here have a puka shell necklace? No, nah, it's just metal. Come on. So uh, tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about my theories. Uh, do you think this is mean but untrue or mean but true? I could have just predicted. Like if I would have seen this before I knew about the IDW, it's like, yeah, this is this company's dying uh yeah they're going down so uh anyway tell me what you think about this video uh subscribe make sure you're still subscribed i'm gonna be on the road a lot uh the next two days so i'm gonna be doing some kind of longer promotional videos for jawbreakers telling where i got the idea telling about all the different main characters and uh it's gonna be a lot of fun thanks for watching bye